So in the last video, I did a really big deconstruction of the Corona Australis Dark Molecular Cloud, and I thought this video would tank, but it didn't tank. I checked my analytics, and it clearly told me that it was the best video I've ever done, and that you guys are huge dorks. So today, I've got a new photo. I've spent a week taking this photo. It's one of the best photos of the Helix Nebula I've ever taken. So stick around to check it out with me. I'm going to really deconstruct this and go deep into what the hell we're looking at. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. A lot of us here in Australia and around the world right now are being restricted. Our movements are being restricted because of this pandemic. Uh, but when I got locked down here, even though my movements are also restricted by the state border controls, uh, I've been locked down with a time and space traveling machine. So while some people are running out of things to watch on Netflix, I have a mainline to intergalactic cable. Now, if you are saving money because you can't go anywhere and you do want to buy a telescope, I do recommend Bintel. Bintel are where I buy all my astronomy equipment. They service Australia and New Zealand. They always have great prices. The stock levels are running a little low right now because everybody in Australia is getting into this hobby right now, which is a good thing. Uh, but they do allow you to pre-order and back order anything you need. Tell them I sent you. Okay, without further ado, here's the photo. But first I've got to add some epic music and an unnecessary iMovie transition. Okay, so big clue before we even get started. This nebula, it's not a real typical nebula. It's, again, in the middle of nowhere, sitting way away from the galactic plane, sort of near the star formal halt, really void part of space. Like before, we're gonna look, really look at what the hell is going on here. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice is the big fucking explosion. It's not a supernova though, this star didn't explode, but it's moving with a force and speed at least 30 times faster than the shock wave from an atomic bomb. So you can call it an explosion, an expansion, a shedding, it really doesn't matter. This is a massive release of material and energy, and it is comparable to an explosion. Before we get into that though, let's notice the central star where the explosion happened. Now visual astronomers struggle to see this 13.5 mag central white dwarf star, and they sort of wear it as a badge of honor if they can make it out. But hey, no problems for us astrophotographers. It's also worth noting that your eyeballs are pretty useless in the dark. If there is a god, she probably didn't want you looking at space because she designed your eyeballs to switch off all the color and use its monochromatic rods instead. And it gets better, all of these are on the outskirts of your eyeballs. And speaking of eyeballs and gods, this thing is often called the eye of god, which is convenient because I can use it to demonstrate how dumb your eyes are. If I overlay the structure of your eye onto god's eye, you can see all the low resolution but colored cones are in the middle of your eye. And the higher sensitivity and higher resolution rods, which are black and white, they're on the outside. But now it's dark when you're outside doing astronomy, so God switched off all of these ones for you. So you won't be able to see the color of the central star or anything else in color at all. Then all the good parts of your eye aren't where you're actually looking. So you have to do this weird move and look away from what you're trying to look at. So you can see a blurry black and white version of it, maybe. This is called averted vision and it sucks. But don't worry, we're using technology, not our pathetic human eyeballs, so we can look directly into the eye of God and call her out. Well, a lot by looking at the colors here. Obviously we have the uh, central oxygen area and the hydrogen areas out here. There's a lot of nitrogen and carbon and other stuff in here as well. But one thing I noticed straight away, do you notice that the middle of this circle isn't where the central star is? I suspect the central star was actually over here. This looks more like the middle to me. Now, it has been 22,000 years since this thing happened. So the natural movement of the star over that time isn't surprising. Uh, this isn't a symmetrical circle either. You'll notice it's a bit of an ellipse. That's because we're looking at it at about a 22, 21, 22 degree angle 
uh, it's angled to us but it is a flat disc all of this stuff is happening and we're looking straight down the barrel of it which is really nice when you're taking photos of the helix nebula one thing to look out for is this brow feature uh, it's really easy to push the black point and just lose all of this outer detail but that's really important for the story of what's going on here this outer layer is the first bit that got shed from this star. This star doesn't have a name. I kept looking for it. I've um, tried a, an annotation. I've tried looking at various data. Uh, I've googled the hell out of it. You know, in the annotations here, I've got names of the some of the other stars, but not the middle one. They just sort of refer to it as CS or Central Star. Anyway, this explosion is about 2.87 light years across, which is big and a useless, meaningless number, which gives you no sense of scale at all. Uh, so to give you an idea, Pluto is about 0.00062 light years away from us. So if this was our sun, Pluto would be about here. And we know now from the exoplanet studies that we're doing these days that for every star in this image, there are more planets. There are planets everywhere. About 40% of the stars we study have exoplanets and that number is probably an underestimation because our detection methods just aren't there yet. So I'm going to assume it's closer to 100% and any of those planets had a really bad day here. So let's rewind this explosion. The explosion actually started here 22,000 years ago, which is basically yesterday. And in that 22,000 years, the inherent motion of the star has seen it drift away from the center where it was when it started. 22,000 years ago, humans were already in Canberra, Australia's capital and they've been poorly represented there ever since. There was pottery in China, and this ancient female was being carved, and nobody really knows why, but let's be honest, boobs are great for lots of reasons. Most people love them. Humans back then would have seen a slightly different star field, and this helix nebula, which they couldn't see anyway with their pathetic human eyeballs, it just wasn't there. What this is now is a planetary nebula, which is a stupid thing to call a star, but astronomers are pretty good at stupid stuff like that. Anyway, when stars die, you probably know they go out with bang, um, if they're big enough, they go supernova, but if they're not big enough, say one to eight solar masses, like this guy, they don't go supernova, they just go... Met, I'm retiring, and after they get really red and bloated due to temperature differentials between the core and the outer layers, they completely vent the red upper layers, which is all this stuff. And this would have happened in a couple of stages. Obviously the first outer layer, which is traveling really fast, and then this second inner layer, and this big release of oxygen here. All of this will float off and dilute and disappear from view eventually. It isn't really an explosion, not a classical explosion, not even a nuclear one. It's really a thermal separation of two layers. But it is pretty violent. Now always when I'm taking photos of deep space, I look for fuzzies, I look for little galaxies. And I could have sworn that this was one here. It's actually easy to see in the color data. So if I look at just the QHY 24-7 color data, which was pretty nice before I even added any monochrome data at all, that really looks like a distinct galaxy. We do have these two galaxies here, these PGCs these light blue annotations, but it didn't pick up that one. In fact, it's got a star catalog number for it. So if that's a star, I wonder if it's a protoplanetary disk or something like that. In my annotation here, I did a filter for stars from about uh, 18 to 18 and a half magnitude, which is why all of these ones are labeled. And I'm pretty surprised. These ones are very hard to see here, but if I go back into the darkness, you can definitely see 18.5, 18.6, 18.17. It is picking up, even at that faint magnitude, which is really nice to see. Now, as this shedding happens, this explosion expansion, whatever you want to call it, something interesting happens around here. And this is something we can tell just by looking at it. I mean, I can tell intuitively that there was stuff here, and this is all being blown away from the middle. You can even see where there's denser patches, where there's more stuff here, it has caused this slowing of the envelope as it grows outwards, and you can see they almost look like comets, and they are actually called cometary globules. And there was some argument over what these are. Are they bubbles? Some people say it's shadowing. Um, but what we are looking at is the revelation of dark matter. And when I say dark matter, I'm not talking about exotic particles or anything like that. I'm talking about stuff that we just can't see because it's dark. Uh, it's clumps of gas, dirt. These are confirmed to be molecular things, so they're essentially dirt and dust and gas and stuff that's sitting out there in space that 
has been illuminated by this explosion. It's also worth noting that when we look at this and a lot of things in space, obviously we are looking back in time and we're looking back in time here by about 700 years, but we are also looking into the future. What we are seeing is what's going to happen to our sun. This is what's going to happen to our solar system eventually. Our star will get bloated, get red, and then just go meh and retire. And the passing of that stellar wind at the end of the star's life cycle is important. It's how the universe recycles this material. It seeds the universe with material with which to create and destroy. It's the yellow recycling bin program of the universe. I mean, right now, as you're watching this video, you're breathing in a mixture of about 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. And that stuff comes from this. You are breathing in star farts. Thanks for watching my shallow paddle into the Helix Nebula. It's the closest planetary nebula to the Earth, so the one that we can get the most detail about this sort of event from. Now, if you're curious about the way I took this, it took night after night in the observatory of trying to get this data, and I only used four and a half hours or 4.7 hours of it. The mono data is 39 times three minute subs with the ZWO 1600mm, uh, which is a black and white camera, and I'm using the hydrogen alpha filter here. This really gives me all of that ionized hydrogen detail so that we can see the detail in the dust and gas clouds. And the color is taken with the beautiful QHY 24-7C. And if you're interested in the telescope side of things, it's the C11 Edge HD with a 0.7X reducer, the off-axis guider, which gives us a focal length of about 1,960 millimeters. Think of it in terms of like if you had a 300mm lens on a camera, times that by a six, and you're getting closer to where we're at with this. Also, in the process of recording this video and putting things together, I noticed a little asteroid running through my color data. See it there? Uh, this is what happens when we blink our images and we see something moving in frame. Uh, and thanks to the power of the internet and particularly the YouTube channel Asteroid Hunters, he helped me to identify this as an asteroid discovered in 2003 called QH62. So thanks for that identification. Thanks also to Nine Inch Nails for the music in this video. And thanks also to fellow YouTuber Cy Peter for letting me use his guitar background music. That's it. Hope you enjoyed my deep dive. COVID hair, don't care. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.